The third thing, Abutai, is our spouse. Our spouse is something that we have to fall in love with. A lot of people say they love their wife. A lot of people say they love their husband. But then they get divorced. How could it be? How do you leave something you love? Some people say a foolish statement that they don't even listen to. I love him, I just can't be with him. I love her, we just can't live together. I was saying, I love breathing, I just can't do it anymore. I've had it, I don't want to breathe anymore. I've had it, it's just too much, it takes too much time. I love eating, I just, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it anymore. It just takes too much time, I gain weight all the time. I've had it, I'm just not going to eat anymore. It's such a foolish thing. I love it, but I just can't do it anymore. No, if you, if you see that not doing it is even an option, you don't love it. You may like it, you may enjoy it, but you definitely don't love it. Because love is not something that you can stop. Love is when your emotions are out of control. Meaning, it's become you. It's consumed you. It is you. That's why the Rambam says the ideal relationship that a Jew is supposed to have with his spouse, with his wife, is to love her as much as he loves himself, but honor her more than himself. What does it mean, love her as much as himself? Love her as much as himself, meaning that just like you wouldn't kill yourself if you're a normal human being, you wouldn't jump off of a bridge, don't murder her with words. Just like you wouldn't want to, to hurt yourself or anyone to hurt you, don't hurt her either. Think 80 times before a word comes out of your mouth. Just like you like being appreciate, appreciated, appreciate. But even if you don't like being appreciated, you don't like the attention, that's where the honor comes from. Honor her more than yourself. You don't like being appreciated, it doesn't make a difference. You have to honor her anyway. Still say thank you a million times a day. For what? She woke up. She gave you a time of day. She gave you children. She helped you stay away from sin. The Gemara says if a wife keeps you away from sin and brings you children, she's an eshet chayil. What about cooking and cleaning? That's extra. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. If she keeps you away from sins and takes care of your kids, brings kids to the world, she's eshet chayil. But unfortunately, many men don't understand this. Some men think that we're Muslim, not Jews. So they treat their wives like uh, they, uh, they have a uh, turban on. And uh, unless they cook a five-star meal, they act to the wife as if she uh, owes them something. When she says, I need help, you know, there's four or five kids running around the house that can't take care of, care of the kids and work and clean and cook and this. I need some help. What? What help? Tell your parents to come help you. Like they treat their wife like she's a slave of some kind, like she's still in Egypt. Yeah, oh, that's the best one. The people that say, oh, my grandmother used to do it all. Yeah. She had 10 kids and she cleaned and this and that. Yeah, the grandmother also lived in one room. She didn't have a house with 18 rooms. That's all the, all the previous generation lived in one room. Everyone lived in one room. That's what was available. One room. If you had one room, you're already good. Mm-hmm. Ten kids, twelve kids, fifty, doesn't make a difference. One room, that's what you can afford. To expect the wife to clean those fifteen rooms you have in the house and work and clean and, and give the a pizza. Back then, what do you do to, to help the kids? Hey, kids, wake up. Here's a uh, some piece of bread to eat. Go learn Torah. After you finish, you come, you help in the house. That's what the, That was the day. Today, the kid, you have to appease them every 30 seconds. You have to give them a present. You have to pay attention. You have to put a show on. You have to take them to a, uh, to a class. You have to take them to a course. You have to help them do this. You have to have them on your head, on your toes, on your knee. You have to play with them. Yeah. It's not the same thing. You cannot compare this generation to the previous generation. You cannot compare the two. You can't say, oh, no, no, my grandmother had 10 kids. You should have 10 kids. What 10 kids? Can you handle 10? You can't handle me. You want to handle me and 10 kids? So that's the thing. Abutai, men have to understand that being a woman, there's a special blessing. We say to Hashem, thank you for not making me a woman. What do you think, Hashem is a chauvinist? 
He's trying to tell you men something. It's very difficult to be a woman. Very difficult to be a woman. Very difficult. One. Number one. The hormonal roller coaster that an average woman goes through on a typical day to a man, you wouldn't survive it. A man would not survive the body of a woman for a single day. All these idiots that want to pretend they're women just by putting some, uh, some uh, clothes on them. By the way, you know what happens? There's an ab- abnormal amount of suicide. An abnormal amount of suicide for people that start injecting estrogen, other women hormones into their bodies. What do you think? It's because and no one liked them? Like people like the media likes to say, oh, no one liked them. They were really putting a lot of pressure on them because they came out of the closet. No, no, no. No, God's telling you, I created you as a man because you cannot handle being a woman. As soon as you fight forcing it, you died. Why? You can't handle the hormonal roller coaster that a woman handles. As soon as a woman grows up, has a time of the month, gets married, have a kid, whatever she got used to for the first 18, 20, 25 years of our life, of how our hormones are, how the time of the month is, how everything was, just goes upside down. Why? Everything that she knows for the first 25 years is now completely irrelevant. She has now officially become a different person. What do you mean? I'm used to the time of the month coming on this day, on this month, and it is, and it hurts this way, and it hurts that way, and it blows this way, and blows that. Yes, good. That was the first chapter. Now you had a kid. Everything that happened before you had your first child was a different person. You now have something else. Yeah, but I don't know anything about this. Good luck. There's no book. There's no book to teach you this. No. That's why us men said, Baruch Hashem, I'm not a woman. Now, she had another kid. Another kid. Guess what? Guess what? Another new body. Another new body. Another hormones. One more hormones here. One more hormones there. One's black. One's green. The other guy's Chinese. The other guy's Jewish. This one's a Hindu. It's so all the hormones are fighting with each other. Oh, ah, what happened? Oh, you were, you were kosher until now. Yeah, but now we're, uh, we're a little off the derech. We're hormones off the derech. It comes every Tuesday now. It used to come every Shabbat. Now it's a two. What happened? Different. Second kid. Ooh, wah, ooh, wah. And you realize what men don't understand that when a woman gives birth, she carries a child. She carries a human being for nine months. Now it all looks cool on the outside for the men. Wow, there's a piece of me in there. Wow, it's going to be a little kid, a little me, a little her coming into the world. Wow, it's so cool. Wow, he's going to be a tzaddik. Wow, it's going to be a tzaddikah. Wow, wow. All the while, they don't realize that the woman inside her body, what's happening in her body, when she says, oh, it's uncomfortable, what she really is telling you is, I'm dying from pain because inside me, this baby's killing me. He's breaking up my entire body inside. All of the organs shift from where they know to be for 25, 30 years they're used to it. They have a home. The lungs are over here. The stomach's over here. The kidneys over here. Everybody has their place. All of a sudden, baby comes. Oh, guys, move out. What do you mean move out? It's my house. Sorry, I'm here. Move out. The guy comes and runs the show. We don't even know this guy. Yeah, he runs the show. For the next nine months, I call the shots. The lung has to go here. The kidney has to go here. The liver goes here. Everyone's here. Everyone's here. Oh! And you are like, wow, it looks so cute. What's so cute? She's broken inside. She, the fact that she survives is a miracle of its own. Now, she gave birth. Her whole body now has got used to this shape over here. Now, there's an emptiness. Now he left. She left. The little baby left. So everybody wants to come back. What do you think they just come back? Well, it's like a, it's like a rubber band. Now she takes months to come back and heal. And that's why we have to wait a year. Normal, normal situation, you have to wait a year. Why? Because it takes about a year for it to heal. Our whole body is broken. Yeah, on the outside looks great. Inside, it's broken. And what is the guy says, oh, how come, you're not, uh, how come you're not so into me anymore? Is it because of the kid? No, you moron. She's broken. <laughs> She's broken inside you, insensitive little bug. 
she's broken inside the fact that she's even saying hi to you she say thank you and kiss her feet men don't think like this but that's why Hashem put a blessing in our Sidu Baruch Hashem I'm not a woman Baruch Hashem why because Abutai, it's very hard it's very hard for a woman to be a woman it's very hard so now after that hormones there change again another new body and then if that wasn't enough she had the puberty she had the kids she had the marriage she had another kid uh, uh, then if that wasn't enough already she arrives in mid-age at some point and now all bets are off all bets are off everything she knew for 50 60 years gone now another new phase another new body yeah, but uh, you were good for 60 years, 50 years, 70 years. You were good. Everything was good. Yes, but then there's uh, menopause, and then the hormones go in a different direction, and then she has to uh, deal with it. Oh, how come you're moody? If you dealt with my body for a second, forget for a year or for the rest of your life, for a second you'd commit suicide. That's why. It's one of the many reasons why a man is obligated to honor the woman more than himself. Why? You can't do what she's doing. You can't. That's why Hashem created you, amen. But that's also why you're obligated to learn a lot more Torah. The fact that she goes through such messy with nefesh, her whole life, even without wanting it, makes her automatically suffer more than the man, which automatically makes a woman more spiritual than a man and closer to Hashem naturally. A man doesn't have all of this. He has to work hard at being connected to Hashem. So Rabotai, if a person knew just a little bit of what I'm saying and understood it and repeated this part of the lecture a thousand times, this alone will make him love his wife. This alone will make him want to call his wife. This alone will make him appreciate his wife. Why? I can't do it. I can't do what she's doing. And all she's doing with all that, she's taking care of kids. While she's doing all of that, she still has a smile on. While she's doing all of that, she still wants to be with you. While she's doing all of that, she's still cheering you up and so on and so forth. That's Eshet Chayv. That's why it doesn't say in the Gemara, if she cooks and she cleans and she does this. No, no. It just says she keeps you away from sin and she brings children to the world. That's it. Eshet Chayv. Everything else is good. Should do it. But Eshet Chayl already is the first two. Why? Because you're dealing with so much already. What's the problem? 